This is Joseph Coco. I'm at TCAF 2015 on behalf of Becky Hilburn's Art Process Blog, Keep on Trucking Natto Soup. <laughs> if you could introduce yourself, Corey. Uh, my name is Corey Bing. I am a cartoonist and illustrator out of Portland, Oregon, and I do a comic called Skin Deep. Okay, and what brings you to TCAF? Um, I've actually been trying to get into TCAF for about four years now, and this is the first year I was able to get in. But like, it's just one of the... This, it's the comic convention to go to. Like all my friends who do conventions and comics and stuff, they are. They are. This is the always the most. Everyone is always so, super excited about TCAF. It's like yeah. TCAF and SBX, the two ones everyone wants to go to. And so I just really wanted to come, and I'm glad I did because it's awesome. Definitely. So. <laughs> well, you're coming from Portland, which has quite the comic scene yeah. itself. Well, it's got a really great comic scene, but like with the Stumptown collapsed a couple of years ago, and so like okay. we don't have very good conventions there yet. Yeah, I've they're, heard it's not quite the same thing. They're as trying what to build it, it back to up, but like for being a town full of so many cartoonists, we don't really have our own con yet, and yeah. so it's it's nice to be able to go and hang out at a place like this with a bunch of other cartoonists. So it's a lot of fun. Definitely. Uh, so how long have you been doing Skin Deep? Uh, I started doing. I started publishing it online in 2006, and I'd I had been working on the story since uh, since like late high school, and it was one of those things that I was like, I, I don't know how to make a comic, so I can't start yet. I don't know how to make a comic, so I can't start yet. Yeah. And I realized finally, like if I kept on saying that, I was never going to start. And so I just kind of jumped in and decided that like my first my first volume is pretty sketchy, but. I feel like every page, it, it improves really fast from the first uh, page to the last page. So, yeah. Speaking yeah. of, yeah. I, I brought a copy with me. Yeah. I just this bought is my one. first so book. If, if you could show us a little bit, yeah. that'd be this great This is my first book, talk. which I started <laughs> off, I drew the first pages in a sketchbook uh, that I inked with some uh, like brush pens and then colored digitally. And I didn't know, like I wanted to do something with texture, but I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I didn't know anything about like gutter size or anything like that, or even like placement of... This is a good page because it's kind of awkward. It does like placement <laughs> of balloons and stuff. But then as I went along, like this is the first chapter, and then here's a page from the last chapter. Uh, here's the last chapter, and I went full digital about halfway through, and I got better at and everything. This is probably a year, <laughs> about, two years later. About two years, yeah. I think it okay. took me about two and a half years to do the whole thing because I updated it between two it started off two times a week and then I went to one time a week and so it took about two and a half years to do this whole comic and it uh actually I know the page where I switched from drawing it by hand to digitally this is I drew this is the last page I drew on a sketchbook and this is the first page I drew digitally yeah and you can tell tell yeah you can totally tell and so uh that was a lot of fun just learning just basically and if I if I made a page that I didn't like I would instead of going and redoing it I'd be like well I'll just fix it I'll just Keep that in mind and do it better the next page. Yeah. And just that's a great way to go yeah. about doing a webcomic. And I know a lot of people they want to have like everything to be perfect, which is it's all right. Like to make like the first thing they do would be a good, something good, but yeah. a lot of people get stuck in that and this re, like redrawing the first issue, redrawing the first issue, yeah. redrawing. And that's as soon the as the danger you, of having a buffer, I yeah, mean, it's great to have a buffer when you're starting, yeah. but obviously at some point you need to release your. Every comic. once in a while, because like the style, yeah. the beginning of this book especially is so much different than my current one right now. I keep on thinking, well, maybe I'll go back and redraw. But then I know that as soon as I start doing that, by the time I get to the end, the beginning is going to look old again. So I just kind of like leaving it. And I get a lot of people who really enjoy, like they, they tell me that they enjoy seeing the art evolution through the years. So Definitely. that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's always a bonus. So, so uh, Skin Deep being the, the primary thing, I guess you mm-hmm. would say that you would do, um, are you, how do you find people respond to that at conventions when they say, oh, I could just read this online? Why do yeah. I want to buy the book? It's a, I had, I had, to, conv- I had to, to explain this to my parents, actually, because they didn't <laughs> understand, like, well, how do you make money off of books if you ha- have it for free online? But a lot of people, especially with long-form comics, uh, like the once a week or however long you can update it, like, it's not perfect for the web, like for a long-term comic, because you want to be like read several pages at a time, and you can't do right. that with long-term or with long-form comics. And uh, so, like, getting the book, you can like breeze through it the way that it was originally re- meant to be read, just like as a group. And also, a lot of people just like having books and like being able to feel the books, and like it is a different experience between that and, and reading online. And so, I have enough people that just want to be able to own a book. Definitely. And so yeah, and I, considering TCAF is sponsored by a library. Yeah, exactly. It makes perfect sense exactly. that people coming here would, would enjoy yeah. the tactile feel. And I also book. put a lot of like extras and stuff in the book, like a character guide and notes and things in the back, just to have a little bit of extra of like, thanks for buying the comic. Here's some little extra goodies that you can't get online. So I try to add a couple things that are nice that you can't get online. Okay. So.
And what's been your experience with TCAF? We're on the second day here. Um, <laughs> not necessarily sales-wise, but just the crowd. and The vibe is amazing. Like, I just, everyone's super into comics and wanting to, to like, I'm really interested in just, like, oh, I have never heard of this before. Tell me more about it. And they are, is this great vibe i think the, and a lot of little kids that come in that are really ex- it's really exciting to yeah. see little kids being excited about because comics. it's free admission people yeah. are just coming off the street i love Similar that to, uh, mocha fest isn't free but mm-hmm. it is or it was in a, a pretty central location yeah. so a lot of people are just walking by would come in off the street yeah van Cap is like that too it's in a pretty central location and free to get in so a lot of people are like what's this comics whoa <laughs> and it's, it's neat to just kind of see people who aren't usually into comics seeing all the stuff for the first time being really in, like inspired by it and things like that so yeah who would have thought there's more to comics and superheroes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, most people like they don't think of more than the comics and the superheroes. So like being able to show like all these people who do things that aren't superhero comics and like nothing wrong with superhero comics, but there's so much more of the genre than what like pop culture usually focuses on. So it's fun to get people to go like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> okay, well it's good to hear you having a good experience. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, so can you tell me a little bit about? Um, uh, future projects you have? I, I assume when's the next volume of Skin Deep going to be coming I actually out? just, uh, this is the second convention I've had my third book okay. at. So which, it's going to be a little while. To yeah, I just got my third book. I actually haven't sent out the Kickstarter yet, so like it's, I just got, like I had I had advanced copies at Emerald City and then I got my actual copies for this con, okay. so it's so brand in, new. Unless you're, you've been at one of those two conventions, yeah, you don't have the third not, book. No, you right. don't, unless you've been in one of those, because it's not online, I haven't sent out my Kickstarters yet, so it's a brand new book and that was really fun. It was my third Kickstarter. And, uh, awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. It's, it's, it's fun to make new books, but I'm also glad that I will be a while before I make another one because <laughs> <Well, congratulations. laughs> they wear you out. <laughs> How was the Kickstarter process? I mean, you have, I assume you have this under your belt if it's the third one. You know, I, I've, every, every Kickstarter I do, I've done three. The first one was for a, a card game that I made based on Alice in Wonderland. And the second one was for the first two volumes of my book. And then the third one was the third volume of, the, of my book. And each okay. one, like each one, I've made like a terrible mistake on each one and like learned from that, but then done a total new terrible mistake so like the the first one with my card game i didn't add in shipping at all so luckily it was overfunded enough to not like put me in the poorhouse for uh, for shipping so like yeah but they save myself on that one basically all the profits yeah i ate all the profits from that but i didn't go under so and then the second the second one i uh i was like I'm going to get, do do shipping just right this time, and then between the Kickstarter ending and the, the and uh, the Kickstarter stuff showing up, the shipping rates had jumped a whole lot, and so like, I wasn't able to even like anticipate that happening. But yeah. and then with the third book, I uh, I launched it at the end of December. Or I launched it in November through December, which is a not a good. If you're launching a Kickstarter, don't end, launch it at the end of the year because no one will pay attention to it. <laughs> I was afraid it wasn't gonna wasn't gonna make it because everyone was everyone's focused on Christmas and, and yeah. end of the year stuff. They want and to hand someone yeah. something physical rather yeah. than saying, "Oh, when and, every, this and, book that, gets and everyone's shipped, distracted." Yeah. There's not like the internet slows down a lot during the holidays because everyone's with their family and not on the internet, and so it's it's it was a lot harder to. I, I made it, but I, was, I felt like for a while, just like, oh no, <laughs> it's not going to make it. I'm going to be a huge failure. But so, yeah, every keep on learning, learning and apply to the next one. Okay. Yeah. And you also sell other things like charms uh, and uh, stickers and those sort mm-hmm. of things. Those, um, I didn't take too close of a look. Those are to supplement uh, Skin Deep or yeah. they're just something else to have on your table? The, the little, the little plastic charms the are little characters from the comic and awesome. the medallions. In the comic, the, the mythical creatures use medallions to uh, cast the illusion of humanity on themselves. So I wanted to bring like little like real world versions of those little yeah, trinkets. That's super into, cute. So I thought that'd be cute. And then I, the stickers are like griffins because Skin Deep has griffins. <laughs> and, uh, and then I also have dinosaur stuff on my table because I just really like dinosaur stuff. Yeah, and I've been doing more like, like one-off prints that don't have anything to do with Skin Deep just in my, my free time. And it's really fun, like dinosaurs. <laughs> And how would you compare TCAF to SPX or possibly Mocha Fest? Well, I haven't been to Mocha Fest. Oh, I'm sorry. So, I yeah, you said you no, had. I haven't been to Mocha Fest, but uh, it's a lot bigger than SPX. The vibe is very similar. It's a cool. I like this, like, like the festival rather than like convention sort of vibe of people. When you say bigger, you mean the number of people tabling, the amount of everything. panels, everything or the is way bigger than SPX here. Okay. Yeah, everything. There's more people. There's more panels. There's more uh, like two floors with the stuff. Yeah. And uh, SPX is a lot smaller, but the vibe is very similar. Of just like and people who like like who are coming to buy things from you and like they like to support artists and like to uh, give money to the arts, which I find a lot at like the pop culture conventions. I like pop culture conventions, but there's a lot of people who are just like 
this is too expensive. I don't want it. And <laughs> <laughs> just like, I'm sorry, I have to eat. So, yeah, I like this, the vibe. It's yeah, a lot some people don't realize it. It costs a lot more to yeah. self-publish books. Than yeah, exactly. To just buy it like, cheap. I can just buy this. I can buy this at Borders for $15. I guess Borders isn't a thing anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> but I said, at Barnes & Noble for $15. It's like, yeah, but you can't buy this at Barnes & Noble for $15. You can only buy it from me. Right. Probably I made it. So. Um, another thing, uh, I, I haven't been able to ask anyone else, and I'm not sure if you're f- familiar with mm-hmm. it, but there is a gaming room uh, in the section. Oh, is yeah. that is that more targeted at, like, sequential sort of, um, like, graphic novels? I haven't been able to look at the gaming room too much, okay. but I do know... I, I was just curious. Yeah, if you I have a couple it. friends who are making, like, like several of the different pe- friends who are, like, are making video games and stuff, and, like, so, yeah. like, people who do indie games and stuff do intersect a lot with... Like the, the sequential art and yeah, the they're certainly route. paying a lot of illustrators yeah. from the sequential yeah, art. Yeah, definitely. Realm. And yeah. Uh, that would be something I'd also be interested in make, working on. I've always been more interested in working on games and stuff, so I want to go back and I haven't been downstairs at all yet. <laughs> well, I want to check out the game room. <laughs> hopefully, I'll be able to interview uh, yeah. some people. That uh, That is actually upstairs, though. It's next is to it the elevators. Oh, yeah. I haven't even been outside of this main room. <laughs> it's fine. I, I completely understand. Yeah, I haven't yeah. quite fully explored the convention. So. I have not either. <laughs> Um, okay, so would you have any advice to someone who is, to an artist or a writer who's planning attending uh, TCAF for the first time? Um, it's hard to, like, it's really nervous when you're doing something for the first time and, like, you don't, you're not exactly sure what you should be doing, but just kind of forgive yourself for making mistakes for the first, like, if, especially if you're doing something for the very first time, like, if you don't bring in enough comics or you don't have enough merchandise or you bring too much or you don't do whatever, like, just forgive yourself it's your first time you'll get it better next time okay and yeah just do it just do it <laughs> okay and where could we find your work online uh skindeepcomic.com and also coreybing.com has my non-comic work on it okay so. and that's where we would go to commission you yes okay yeah and it's also coreybing.com is also hooked up to my tumblr so if you want to follow me on tumblr then awesome. you can do it that way <laughs> and right. my, my twitter is also Corey Bing. so basically if you type in Corey Bing, you get all my stuff <laughs> all right thanks Corey. thank I hope you so you have much a good thank you so much